FM. Happy Eden Malud to you. Hope your holiday is going quite well. You are enjoying it however you can. Take advantage of it because tomorrow you have to go to work. Unlike people people like us, we have to work. And uh, if you're running your own business, uh, you still have to go to work today because sometimes you sell more today because people are home and they tend to spend more money to go out and uh, see the world and do more things. I have Peter Anosike with me in the studios today. You know, every Wednesday uh, is uh, Mr. Anosike's uh, turn where we get to talk about how to grow your business, how to expand your business. So uh, today we have an interesting topic that we'll be looking at today. You know, on my way to work, I usually buy one very lovely bread, very sweet bread. I don't know what they put inside, but when you're eating the bread, it's like you're tasting chocolate and milk. Very superb bread in a little corner along the road. Not a big bakery, very portable bakery making this bread. So you see cars, they park, they buy. Recently, I've not been seeing them. The shop is closed. I've been, okay, why, this, why are they not opening? I went there, continue, I keep going there, and, and they, they are closed now. They are out of business. They make very lovely bread. And that's the story of many businesses today. They, they're good, many small businesses today. They, they, they have the skills, they know how to do the business, but they cannot survive. So today, we want to look at the reason behind small business failures and ways to address and overcome these challenges so if you're running a small business this program is for you if you haven't closed shop yet this is for you and if you have closed your shop this is all this is for you too because you're going to learn something here that could keep you in business for a long time uh, peter nosike is a regular on this program he's a philosopher he's a, a business uh, expert he's a, he said i shouldn't call him a business uh, cultural analyst but he's been in business for a very long time and he has the information that could help you this morning good morning to you sir yeah good morning good to have you on the program thank you now, the, the very first question is this. What, what is the most common reasons behind the failure of small businesses and how can they be prevented or mitigated? Well, good morning, listeners. As to start with, business failure has two factors. We have external and internal. External is the ones that are beyond your control. An instance, today, diesel is selling at 1,100 per liter. 1,100 per liter, the highest in the history of Nigeria. So you, as a small business owner, you don't have control over it. Donda is a changing for almost uh, 1,000 uh, 1, and something naira per, per Donda. You as a small business owner, you don't have control over this. These are some of the external factors. Then government and policies, you don't have uh, control over this. So business failure has two major causes one external and two internal yeah okay um but uh, i like to focus uh, on the internal which is you the business owner do you think the internal is greater than the external yes if you organize the internal very well you can cushion the effect of the external Okay, so so go on. Let's let's get the. Okay, that's to start with. Our problem, ninety nine point nine percent of our problems are physical, not spiritual. Ninety nine point nine percent of our, of our problems, of our challenges, are physical, not spiritual. And if business is fail, there are two things. One. It's either that you are doing what you are not supposed to do or you are not doing what you are supposed to do. This is, this is the reason why business fail. This is the reason why people fail 
in whatever they are doing, in whatever enterprise that they are in. It's either that they are doing what they are not supposed to do, or they are not doing what they are supposed to do. But statistics show that four out of every five new businesses fell within three years. That's what the uh, statistics say, which is a whooping 80%, which means 80% of every new business fell in Nigeria. That's why the bread, the bread factory that you saw two months ago is no more there. Yeah. Understand? But what statistics shows that show that for every 10 new businesses, eh, for every 10 new businesses, one succeed, one struggle, eight fail. For every 10 new businesses, only one succeeds. The, the other one struggles, then eight fell. That's why somebody said that it is far easier. Make it. Oh, go ahead, I'm following. It is far easier to gain admission into Harvard than to s s succeed in a business. That it is easier to gain admission to Harvard. Which is very difficult. You know, Harvard is the number one university in the world. So that it is easier to uh, to gain admission into harvard than to succeed in a business so that shows you how succeeding in business is and the main reason why this is happening is that people don't always go to find out why are these businesses spending so that they can do their own in a different way so people are more tuned to success than to failures. Understand? Mm -hmm. They like that to hear stories of successful people than the stories of those who fail. But when you hear, when you listen to, or when you read the stories of people who failed, you know the reason why they failed and will now want to do your own in a different way. So this is one of the reasons why the failure has been re recurring. Because people focus more on the on the on those who have succeeded than on those who have failed. So, when you when you research, let me know why this. Uh, bread, okay, how many people will go and find out why that bread factory is no more there? Understand? Yeah. Not everybody will want to go and find out, okay, I want to start a bread factory. Why did this one fail? And you go there and, and find for yourself why they, so that you can now know what to, what to overcome. That's some of the reasons why people are failing in business. They are more focused on those who, who, who have succeeded than those who have failed. But failure teaches you far more than success. And, and that's what people, that's, this is a psychological hack that people don't know. Failure teaches you more than success. That's why even in the Bible, it was said that it is better to be where they are holding a funeral than, than, than where there's a banquet. Because you learn more where they are holding funeral than where they are holding a banquet and that's how it is in business that's a fact people focus more on those who are doing well than those than those who are not doing well now if you if you are not doing well and i want to start a business i want to go and find out why what are those things that you are doing why you are offending i now have to if i know them i will now do my own in a different way do, do you understand it? So, so that's how this thing works. So now, reasons why people fail, in why um, small businesses fail, we'll start with uh, that wrong mindset. What are you coming to do in, in business? Because success and failure are all in the mind. How prepared are you in the mind? Understand? What capacity have you built in yourself to show that you are going to do well in this business? What research have you done? 
Have you looked at those who are in the same line of business that you want to go in and see how they are faring? If you don't do all this, you will not, you may not succeed in that business. So, uh, number one is a wrong mindset. Understand? Yeah. Because success is in the mind, failure is in the mind. It is, it, it, it is your mind that will more than any other thing determine whether you are going to succeed in this business or not. And that, and that depends on the capacity you have built in yourself, how you have invested in yourself. So the number one reason why people fail in business is wrong mindset. Wow, really? You know, some people don't see it this way at all because economic factors has a great role to play. For example, you are doing a business in a fluctuating market where there is recession and that can affect small business greatly for example you already done your research you have a mind to succeed and you like you mentioned diesel the price of diesel just goes 1100 yeah and then things so start happening a lot of factors are going to shut down yeah so so that that affected the business and you had to shut down because the business is no longer profitable uh cost of employing labor has gone up the flour that used to produce the bread has gone up diesel now that you power your oven has gone up so so is it it is it about so much of the mind like you said when you have external factors affecting so that's the why business? i said when you organize your your internal factors very well and eh? you can cushion the effect of the external factors it's just like in a game of football if your defense is strong if you organize or even in in what situation if your defense is strong it can it can wage those in it those in an offensive if you organize your defense very well it can help to wage those that are coming to, to attack you. So that's why I said that the internal plays a very big part. But because, because of the way our brain is configured, we always look outward than inward. When you ask a businessman, why are you fending? He will mention the exchange rate first. Mm -hmm. He will mention the uh, uh, um, 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 lack of uh, infrastructure. He will mention 20 things without mentioning himself. Because that is the way our brain is configured. It was configured to be looking outward rather than inwards. So we like looking for other things that is affecting us and not those that, uh, that what we are doing that is affecting us. That's why I say if you are failing in life or in business, it is either you are doing what you are not supposed to do or you are not doing what you are supposed to do. It is either you are doing what you are not supposed to do or you are doing what you are not supposed to do. That, that is the reason, the main reason why people fail in life, in business, in any endeavor. No, no. So it's not magic, it's not juju, it's not uh, people in the village, no. It's always f from, from within us. We don't like taking a responsibility, understand? Because no matter how bad the, the economy is, people are making sales. No matter how bad a market, a market is, people are making sales. So ask yourself, what are those people who are doing selling? doing that I'm not doing. Understand? Mm -hmm. Those who are succeeding, what are they doing that I am not doing? If you can make yourself the center of your business, that's begin to take responsibility, not looking for who to for who is doing you or not doing you. The economy is bad. People are make, still making sales. What are they doing that I am not doing? Those whose business are succeeding, what are they doing that I am not doing? Make yourself the center of your world and you will do well. 
Now, there, there are specific industries and sectors where small businesses tend to struggle. They struggle more. There are some businesses that right now, as a small business owner, you, you are doomed to fail. So why don't, why, I think we should look into that uh, part of our discussion that, okay, it might not be the person, it might be the business because there are certain businesses. I don't know if we could list some of the business that if you're doing right now, that business now, is doomed that, to fail. And it's that you mentioned bread. Yeah. The wheat we are using come from Ukraine. Ukraine is the, is, is, is the largest exporter of uh, wheat. And the wheat is what they are using to make bread. The war in the, the Russian invasion of uh, of Ukraine has affected the export of of uh, wheat because the eastern the eastern border where Ukraine used to follow that to export uh, wheat, Russians are in control of that section of the country. So this has made the cost of wheat to go very high. And that's the reason why the cost of bread is also going very high. Yeah. And those who cannot uh, afford wheat are closing shops. I understand? Yeah. Okay. So now, anything, else, any business you are doing has, that has an element of donor, that's, that's importation in it, will be affected under this condition, going by the exchange rate. Just like, let me give you an example, pizza. Over 80% of the ingredients in pizza are imported. Which means those who cannot import are bound to close shops. So, so any, because we are an import-dependent country, mm. anything that, that will affect the exchange rate is going to affect the business that we are doing. Interesting. So if you have a business that is heavily dependent on uh, importing, on I mean, importing. You know that you're, you're, you're facing harder hardship, if there is a word like that. Uh, but, the, but, the, but the way to go is to reduce your overhead cost it by keeps, doing many of your stuff in-house. And sometimes when you reduce your overhead cost, you might be tempted to reduce the quality. No, you don't reduce quality. You rather increase the price, but before you, you increase, explain to your customers the reason why you are increasing. Okay. Now another crucial part in this conversation is effective financial management in ensuring the survival of small businesses. I have noticed that many small business owners don't know how to manage their finances. They don't know about budget, don't know about bookkeeping. They don't have a financial advisor. They just know that, okay, I buy this for this amount and I sell this for this amount. This is my profit. I remove the expenses and all of that. But before you answer this question on financial management, I would like you to define who, who, who what is a small business? Because we're saying small business, small business. Uh, let's, well, let's define a, a small, small business. Small business is any business that has less than 450 <laughs> employees. Oh, you see. 450 employees. Mm. You know, so 90% of businesses we have in Nigeria are small businesses. We needed to define that because uh, the conversation, someone would just say, okay, someone that has a, maybe a small kiosk somewhere, someone that just doing it. No. If no, no, no. That's what we have a micro, understand me, then small, medium, understand? Then we have micro businesses based on their capital base. That's how we used to rate them. That's based on their capital base. Eh? But generally, a small business is a business with less than 450 employees. If you don't define that, many people... But under it, it, we have a, we, we rate them based on their capital basis. Wow. We'll go for a commercial break. When we come back, we'll talk more on this. The phone lines will be open and let's talk. Let's know some of your challenges and uh, find, way to, find ways to, to sort them and, and solve the problems this morning. Keep it here. This is the voice of the people. 90.3 FM. Are you looking for...
for the perfect getaway? Look no further than the luxurious accommodations at Airport Golden Tully Hotel, yeah, Lagos. Number 42, Muritala Muhammad International Airport, Ooh, Lagos. Relax and unwind in a beautifully appointed room featuring all the amenities you need for a comfortable stay. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, our attentive staff is here to ensure that your everyday need is met. We also offer complimentary pickup and drop off from the Lagos Airport. Take advantage of our state of the art fitness center, outdoor pool, and enjoy a delicious meal at our on site restaurant. With stunning views, world class service, and a prime location, Airport Golden Tulip Hotel, Lagos is the perfect choice for your next vacation or business trip. So, why wait? Book your stay today and experience automating comfort and luxury at Airport Golden Tulip Hotel. For bookings and reservations, please call 0815-8003-333 or 0815-7003-333. You can visit our website at airportgoldentulipotel.com. Airport Golden Tulip Hotel, where luxury meets comfort. Uh -huh. Taking it further. Mm. Catch us live on YouTube at BOP TV for all the juicy content you can't resist. Talk shows, exclusive interviews, news, lifestyle, and more. It's all about you. BOP TV, show up, speak up. Are you aware that Iruka Online Limited installed and designed a 100,000 capacity church building? Oh yeah, we are the sole distributors of global leading brands all over the world, such as Wafte Light Array, speakers and digital amplifiers, Presenos digital mixers and studio equipment, Coswell workstations and keyboards, Fender guitars, Mapex drums, Ashdown bass combos, just to mention but a few. We offer flexible payment plan handled by our financial department with 24 seven customer care support system you can visit our website on www.iruka.com to avoid buying fake products you can also visit our showroom at number 36 lagos international airport road beside golden tulip hotel iruka never set to for less <laughs> The award-winning pizza in the U.S. is now here in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Romeo, the pizza champion, and cold berry ice cream. Delight in every scope. Visit any of our outlets and feel the rich taste from the pizza champions and cold berry ice cream at 11 Road by First Avenue, Festa Town, 28 at Denira Ogusanya Street, Surulere, 13 at Marilty Way, Lucky Face One, Romeo's Pizza and cold berry ice cream. Romeo, the pizza champion. <laughs> Voice of the People 90.3 FM, you are listening to Business Around Town. Today we are discussing the reason behind the failure of small businesses in Nigeria. 
and what can be done to help what you can do to succeed as a business owner now before we went for the break uh, peter and was given uh, an explanation explaining what a small business is because we're saying small business small and most times we mistake small business for micro uh Businesses. Yeah, those people selling uh, d- um, detergents and so on and so forth, doing uh, um, um, soap, soap making, that's what people think uh, uh, uh. are small businesses. No. These factories and down the ocean, their Papa Road are small businesses. As long as they don't have more than 450 employees it's a small business mm, interesting so so that, that's that's really good to know which means let's, we let's are talking things. to every business owner <laughs> in nigeria because basically 90 percent of the businesses in nigeria fall under small businesses yes that, that's true so so let's get that very clear so we're talking to you this morning if you own a small business and if you also own a micro uh, business this is also for you now i'm going to open the phone lines very soon but before that let's look at not a look at another uh problem reason why business fail one of the reason i see here is uh, the lack of strong online presence and digital marketing strategy this affects small businesses if you if you don't have a strong online presence right now you don't know how to navigate the digital world you you are bound to fail which is which is still um, a complex problem in to, in the twenty first in the digital age. If your business is not online, you are going to find it difficult to sell. You are going to find it very very difficult to sell. So it is one of the problems. But before we talk of of it, we can talk of um, lack of strategy. Understand? Now. If you want to go into business, you should ask yourself, assuming that you've given an instance of, of a, a bread factory. Mm-hmm. Let's continue um, that's, uh, on that. Mm? Yes. If I want to run a bread factory now, I first of all ask myself, what and what are the things I need to have before I will succeed in this bread factory business? What and what do I need to have before I will do well in this bread factory business? That's the first question. Second question, what and what do I need to know before I will do well in this bread factory business? It therefore means if I can assemble all the tools I need to have and get all the knowledge I know, it means I will do well in that business. That's strategy. Um, uh, vision is where you want that to go. A strategy is the steps mm, to get to your vision. Mm. But people have vision, they don't have a strategy. Understand? You want to be a bindonier. Then what and what are you going to do to, to, to get that bindonier? Bindonier is your vision. But what are the strategy, the, the steps that will take you to where you are going? So money, most, most people have vision, but they don't have a strategy. You want to run a successful business, fine and good. Mm-hmm. What are those things that you need to have? What are those things that you need to know to run a successful business? So that's what I mean by lack of a strategy. Most people who are going into business don't have the right strategy. Mm-hmm. If you want to open up a, a bread factory, ask yourself, what and what do I need to have to run a very successful bread factory? Then you now begin to get those things down. What and what do I need to know to run a successful bread factory? You, you go and gather those knowledge. If you can do this, this the odds are internal now. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Once you organize your internal very well, it will cushion the effect of the external. So you must research, you must do feasibility studies. There's no miracle, there's no shortcut in business. <laughs> Interesting. Now, before we went for the break, I remember asking about uh, <clears throat> the financial capacity of 
uh, small business owners, I mean, the financial literacy, if they know about finance, if they know about budgeting, if they know about how to do bookkeeping, keep effective records of their businesses. So many small business owners, they fall short in this this area. I don't know if you could speak on that. One, people don't know that, uh, one, how much you spend is more important than how much you earn in business. How much you spend is far more important than how much you earn. But again, people focus on how much they are earning instead of focusing on how much they are spending. Cost of finance in business in, in Nigeria is heartbreaking. Cost of finance is one of the greatest kinders of because money doesn't come cheap in Nigeria. When you go to, to the to the bank, most of our banks are fraudulent. We are Nigeria business businessmen and women are just making money for for the for um for the owners of the bank. What do I mean? If you take your money to the bank to deposit, they will give you two and a half percent interest highest. You want to deposit money in the bank. They will give you two and a half percent interest on your money. Yes. Now you want to go and borrow money, they'll give it to you at at the twenty percent. You see it? And if you borrow money at twenty percent to do business, you are going to struggle in that business. If you borrow money at twenty percent, because those banks in Nigeria also borrow from abroad at interest too. You see it. So cost of finance is one of the things that, that is killing businesses in, in the country because it is it is very, very high. Cost of borrowing money is affecting a, a lot of businesses in the country. It's even one of the reasons why why businesses are, are fail. Now let's uh, open the phone lines. We need to hear from you now. 0700-903-903-903. That's the number. 0700-903-903-903. You can also send in a WhatsApp message to 0700-903-9039. Let's talk about your business, your small business, your micro business. What challenges are you facing right now that you need some advice or help with so that uh, you remain in business? Because from the conversation, you can see that many businesses will fail and they are failing now because of internal issues and external, like you said. But from the conversation, it's very clear that the number one reason why a lot of small businesses fail is because of their mindset. A wrong mindset. A wrong mindset. That's the number one for you. Yes. Okay. Let's let's take some calls now. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Turn down the volume on your radio set. Okay, we lost the call. Please turn down the volume on the radio set when you call us. Very important to do that so we can hear you. Uh, are there uh, cultural or social factors that can contribute to the challenges that small businesses face, such as a risk aversion or a fear of failure? Well, cultural our background will always affect the, yes. the, the business the, the way yeah. nigerians do business and the way chinese do business is different we americans or russians do business so let's look at that mm. cultural factor for chinese chinese don't mind business go, going bad they see negativity as an opportunity but here we be, we become we became overwhelmed with uh, with uh, negativities. Understand? So we don't always like to focus on our. Okay, we we have a caller. Let me take this call. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. What's your name and the location? Okay, I'm Mrs. Genevieve. I'm calling from Ijaniki. Okay, Mrs. Genevieve, go ahead with your question, please. Okay, good morning, Mr. Nosiki. Good morning. Hold on, sir. Please, I'm listening. 
to your teaching, you made a statement that um, that you should reduce your overhead costs. Please, I want you to throw more light on that. Okay. Okay. And then, and then, please, I would love to have your contact because I have so many questions to ask. So, if I can have your contact, so that I can speak with the personality. Okay, you you know that he's here every Wednesday, so you could now bring a lot of the questions and start asking them on your behalf, and then you learn. You know, I go to I go to work. I teach it just because of this holiday. Now that's why I'm oh, that's today. why you are home. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Chat me up on WhatsApp. You have a WhatsApp line. Just chat me up there. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much thank for calling. Yeah, much. I appreciate you. Yeah. Now, she's talking about the overhead. Overhead is yeah. one of the biggest kinders of b business. Overhead affects your, in, your profit margin. Then what is overhead? Overhead is the cost of doing that business. The cost of bringing out your product or service to the market. Overhead includes the, 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 the diesel, the energy, the, the electricity. That overhead simply means the cost of, of doing a business, what it takes to bring out a product. Assuming let us still go on uh, bread. Overhead means what, what it costs to bring out those loaves of bread to the market. What you spend in bringing out those loaves of bread. You know, if you spend a very high amount of money in bringing out a product to the, to the market, it's going to affect your profit, your profit. But if you reduce what it costs you to bring that product to the market, you will make more money. So that's, that's what overhead means. What it costs to bring a product to the market. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning to you, sir. What's your name and location? Uh, this is uh, Shakiru calling from uh, Osho. Okay, go, go ahead. So, uh, my question is I want to go into, I want to go into private as a um, first subsidy. As you, you, as hold on, you subsidy. want to go into what business? Into driving, into the driving. Okay, driving. Okay. okay, okay, go ahead. Uh huh, uh huh. So as a uh, government has moved subsidy now and people are not uh, using the uh, people are stopping uh, as in checking or using both. So I'm um, like maybe a uh, maybe if I should go into that driving and send a driver I don't know if I don't get the job. So I just want to ask. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking. Your question will be answered. She wants he wants to know if driving is a good uh, business for good career or business for him to portray right now because the subsidy removal have affected many people. Many people mm -hmm. don't drive their cars to work anymore. They use public transport. If he will get a job as a driver, if well, he should pursue that. Well, I have given a, a kind of a guideline on, on choosing any career. What and what do I need to, to have? To do well in this business understand of course if you want to be a driver you must get a, a driving license it is basic mm. so th then getting a um, job depends on your on your relationship the network that you have you have built then you now have to go and ask the other people in the business drivers how they are faring Understand how they are doing it. So, okay, great. Hope, hope you are satisfied though with your answer. Zero seven hundred nine zero three nine zero three nine zero three. That's the number you can call in now. Let's deal with the challenges you're facing as a small business owner. I think nobody has called with a concrete, a very serious question yet. If you're running a business and you're facing a challenge you you this is time for you to call in and ask questions that would take us uh, there's in time to answer you know that kind of serious questions we're, we're waiting for you you could send in a whatsapp message to 0700 903 903 903 uh, before the calls uh, came in you're talking about chinese their mindset and the way they do business and nigerians africans our mindset and the way we do business and there is a difference because of our beliefs. Mind, 
mind is everything. Mind is everything in business. As I say, success is in the mind, the failure is in the mind, and winning begins from the mind. How do you respond to failures? How do you respond to failures? It's how you respond that makes the difference. And, and, and you're saying that the Chinese, they respond better to failure than us. Sure, sure, sure. Hello? Okay. Let, let's morning. take this call. Hello, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, ma. This is a miracle for me, sir. Miracle. Good to have you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just want to ask, uh, I don't think it's troubling my advice or something. I want to start a business, you understand, mm -hmm. that cattle farming. But the condition of the country now and how business is being affected by government policies, different cost of production getting higher every day. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just uh, having double minds because actually I want to do this business so that I can finish my roofing and complete my project building I'm, I'm going to be on both. The thing is that I get money on a monthly basis or, you know, twice a month, you understand? Is mm -hmm. it that, can I just keep saving for the roofing or can I still venture into business okay. and try to double the money or something? Because mm -hmm. I don't understand this country now. I'm just very confused. You want if to go into cattle, cattle, cattle business, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, cattle family. Okay, okay. I think I think you your question is. Can I keep saving till I I I realize my because that that your that your saving is sure that that thing that's giving you money it's maybe sure, salary yes. that one is sure. Yes. So, okay, sure, okay. Yes, sure. okay. I think I think sure. I, I get your question. Thank you. Yeah, Just thank hold you on for much. your answer. Yeah, you you got what he said. Well, the the issue is by cattle farming to me should mean uh, ranching. Yes. That's not, it shouldn't be um, carrying it up about uh, um, like the traditional uh, Fundadin people. Maybe we'll bring them and then they will that's sell them. Ranching now. Yes, ranching. No, that's uh, just uh, breed, cattle breeding. Understand me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. So the truth is this I don't know where the uh, like uh, this uh, saving of a thing. I, I prefer um, investing than saving now 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 check uh, the exchange rate 100,000 that's a what what that's a um 1000 m um, dollar today is 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 equal to what our 1 million, million naira, naira. Mm -hmm. so if you are saving your inflation is taking most of your money well, he's afraid because so for me, looking at the policies, small, the economy. That's small. That's small. That, that, that is my idea. Understand? People used to say, save for the rainy day. My mind, I say, invest for the rainy day. You don't have to gather all the money be before you start a business. Understand? You don't have to gather all the money bef before you start a business. If it, if you see you are mind to start with 20 cows, why don't you just start with uh, five and begin to so, so, feed so, them? So, so, so the answer is you, you should grow. go ahead and do the business and start, start small. small. Start small. Okay, Miracle, you, you've heard. Start small. Do the business, but start small. We, we have another Hello. caller here. Hello, good morning to you, sir. Okay, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma. Yeah. My name is Mr. Uh, Ojijuku here from Bariga. Okay, sir. Go ahead. Okay, um, my question is this. I'm a property dealer. Mm. I sell online, I make sales online. Mm. I have a website and then uh, whatever, whatever, to make sales online. And I've been selling better food. Somehow, since last year, November, was my last sale. Last like year, November? That's almost a year. Yeah. That's almost a year, frankly yeah. speaking. Yes. Since then, I have been struggling. I have been struggling. Make all the posts and you're running the ads online. As the other said that, I just like uh, I was saving things. Then, but the opportunity for my village. Oh uh, yeah, what is this? I what is wrong? Is this you. future award? <laughs> and I just uh, so is this future award. Yeah. So, um, I need an advice. I need an advice. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. No. It's, for, for for almost a year, it's, it's explainable, very very. 
How? From November, the, the election was heating up. There were anxieties. There were fears. Mm -hmm. From November, December, the presidential election was when? February. Mm. So it will not be advisable to invest in property under an anxiety situation. So I could, that, that could be the reason why nobody has uh, invested in, in his property or nobody has bought uh, his property because Nigeria has not been stable since, from, since, since then, even up to but, but, today. But are people not making sales? His colleagues now. If we speak, we'll tell you that his colleagues, at least they are making sales. That's why he was almost thinking it's a spiritual no, case. There's no spiritual. So, but, but why is not selling listen, now? Listen now. So I say, and it's, it is, I say, when your business is not going on well, it's either that you are doing what you're not supposed to do, or you are not doing what you are supposed to do. Understand? So, and, and, and I said, those who are succeeding, go and find out what they are doing. Those that are selling, go and find out what they are doing that to sell that you are not doing. Understand? But for me, the general answer to this is that Nigeria has been unstable from that October and that year till. There have been anxieties, there have been fears everywhere. So now he should not change his business. He shouldn't change at all. Maybe he should, he should change his strategy. That that the strategy. You don't change the vision. You change the strategy. Okay. He said he's been running ads online. He has a website. Uh, that's he should understand the condition of the country since that February till since that November till now. There's no stability. So for him to now make sales, change your strategy. Maybe you have to now move from place to go to different churches and talk about what you do. Go to different places instead of yes, just online. Build more networks. More networks. Go to different build, parties, build, share build, your cards. Build more network and continue to advertise your website. Okay. And also add fresh information. Maybe more incentives. Yeah. Tell, more pe incentives. tell people that they, they shouldn't be scared that uh, they should still also make investment. Yes, more that, more add more incentives. You know, the best time to invest in best time to invest is when to buy property is when the economy is down. If you have money to put abroad, it, it's not in Nigeria. It it it, it, it not work here. It doesn't I work read here. it in a book. You know those. Uh, those this is doesn't work in Nigeria. No, no, it will work now. Are you? You said business is business, so business is, if it's working, there it should work. If here. it's in America, it's on that crisis period. Then it, you buy properties. You buy properties because you because you know that after after the dark comes the dawn. After those crises, there will be a start. So now, now the, the, the crisis well. we are now we are facing here now, we, mm. we, we, we can't invest with it. People are still afraid mm. until stability returns in the country. So I, I'm not seeing property business booming under this crisis uh, situation. Interesting. That's why you should listen to this program every now until you get how it is being done in Nigeria. You know, when you've read a lot of books, you know, those foreign books to tell you how it is done there. You have to bring it home. Uh, there's a message here. It says from Godwin Suruleri. It says, good morning, Mr. Anasuke. Thank you for your great lectures today. The truth is that what you said today about collecting loans from bank exposed them. This is what banks will never let you know. As if banks are praying or do juju for your downfall whenever you collect loan from them. <laughs> yes. Mr. Godwin, you have a point. Thank you very much. And uh, I think the last call, uh, the person that just called, hope you got answers. Change your strategy. And uh, hopefully it works. But if it does not work, what would he do? It will work. It will okay. work. Add okay. more incentives. Add more information. Engage people more. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we've come to the end of the program today. This is a good place to anchor. Thank you very much for being part of the program. All your calls and contribution. Tomorrow we'll continue from here because we are also going to talk about business with the business activator. So questions will be answered just like we've had now dealing with your business crisis and bringing good solutions for you to succeed in your business because we are rooting for you here 
for you to make more money, for you to stabilize, even in this uh, economic uh, crisis that we are facing, for you to do well. Mr. Peter Anosike, a final word that we can hold on to till next week, Wednesday. If your business is not doing well, it is either you are doing what you're not, what you're not supposed to do or you are not doing what you're supposed to do. That's my final words. Mm, thank you very much, Peter mm. Anosike. So we'll be here again next week, Wednesday. Mr. Peter Anosike will be here again next week, Wednesday, same time from 9.30 to 10.30. But I'll be here again tomorrow for another edition of the program. Keep it here. Do not change the dial. We are the voice of the people, 90.3 FM. Coming up next is Area Mata. My name is Mary on IFA Debbie.